Fred Gomez Carrasco was a notorious drug cartel boss from San Antonio. After years earning millions and running from the cops, Carrasco was serving a life sentence when he decided to break out of the Walls Unit, the oldest prison in Texas. Carrasco and two henchmen took over the prison library. They held teachers and librarians captive as Carrasco bartered for his freedom. Now there's only one way that these people will see the light again, and that's for you to cooperate. The standoff set off one of the worst hostage crises in American history, the 1974 Huntsville Prison Siege. This will be our last day to live if, if, if somebody doesn't come through and help us. They're desperate men and they mean business. He's fixing to shoot me. You know, I'm fixing to die if you don't do something right now. And the rest of us in here are going to die too. These people don't have anything to lose and they're serious. And it's all on tape. Fred, the governor's on for you. The governor wants to talk to you. He can shove it. From Imperative Entertainment, this is Standoff. Dead or alive, I'm going out. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The situation would have seemed absolutely normal had it not been for the location. Two women casually walking together, both carrying bags. They continued along the narrow median separating both sides of the busy M6 highway in England, and when officers monitoring the scene on CCTV first saw them, they quickly dispatched a highway service unit. Cameras followed the women on their precarious journey six lanes of speeding cars and trucks just a few feet on either side. Then, just a few moments before the service car reached the location, without warning, the women jumped over the guardrail and ran straight into the fast lane. One of them was immediately hit by a red sedan, and in the seconds of chaos that followed, it's amazing that the other was untouched. Drivers slammed on their brakes trying desperately not to collide with anyone or anything. As the sound of screeching tires stopped, the one just hit by a car in the fast lane stood up and brushed herself off. Amazingly, she had sustained only minor injuries in what should have been a fatal collision. At this point, the service unit arrived and escorted the women across the highway to the shoulder. Those watching everything unfold from the video control room notified highway police and paramedics who were on their way to the scene. When the police arrived, the situation appeared to be calm and under control. The women identified themselves as Sabina and Ursula Erickson. The 40-year-old identical twin sisters smoked cigarettes on the side of the highway as officers spoke to the service personnel who had been first on scene. A few steps next to them, traffic was once again running smoothly. Sabina Erickson, who had been struck a few minutes earlier, appeared to be doing well. A camera crew with the popular UK television show, Traffic Cops, happened to be doing a ride-along and started filming. They could not have known that within seconds of pressing record, truly extraordinary events would unfold right in front of them. As the sisters chatted with an officer who stood between them and the highway, Ursula suddenly made a dash into traffic. The officer managed to quickly grab a hold of her green jacket and, at least for a moment, was able to hold her back. Before anyone else could react, she slipped out of her jacket and into the path of an oncoming transport truck. Going an estimated 60 miles an hour, the truck driver had no time to avoid her. A moment later, Sabina, wearing a hat that read, Time to Believe, also inexplicably ran straight into traffic. She was hit head-on by a silver Volkswagen and violently thrown into the air. The collision was so hard that it left the upper frame of the car's shattered window shield badly dented. 
Mike Alpha, Mike Alpha, we need ambulance. Senior officers to the scene, we've got two possible fatals. Oscar Tango 3-3. Horrified and in complete disbelief, officers ran into the highway to stop traffic and tend to the sisters. Christ, have you ever seen that before? Not at first. Yeah, I'm me. What the hell were they running for? Stay where you are, stay. Given the severity of the impacts, they assumed both sisters would be in critical condition, and a medical airlift was called to the scene. Oscar Tango 33 on arrival. Both females have ran out into the carriageway. First female has been hit by HGV in lane two, serious injury. Second female has been hit by a small vehicle in lane one. Got two serious casualties. We're gonna need air arms over. Ursula, who had been run over by a truck, was somehow not only alive, but conscious. She was badly injured from the waist down, with obvious trauma to both of her legs. But as officers did their best to help her, she became aggressive and started yelling that she recognized them and that they weren't real. We're police, one of we're here to help. Oh, I recognize you, I know you're not real. Shh. Stay still, boy. Stay still. Right, she's got a complete fracture, what is it, right leg? Sabina, in the meantime, was still lying where she had landed several minutes earlier. She was alive too, but unconscious. After several minutes, she opened her eyes and tried to lift herself off the road. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stay, stay, stay. Have they got a collar or something they can stick on her? It's not work, really. She needs everything. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, don't get going anywhere, okay? Just chill, chill. Appearing to lose consciousness again, Sabina fell back into the arms of an officer. Ursula is heard yelling at her sister that they're going to take her organs. They're going to steal your organs! It's okay, my love. I'm trying to make sure you're okay. With that, Sabina stands up and starts walking toward the other side of the highway. She's yelling at an officer, saying over and over, quote, Why do you kill me? Stay? Why do you kill me? Stay still. Why do you kill me? Despite being hit by a car so hard that it should have killed her, she had the strength to suddenly punch the officer in the face, sending them to the ground. Sabina then climbed over the center guardrail and into the lanes of traffic on the other side of the M6. Police managed to stop traffic and while other officers gave chase, she stopped running, took off her long red coat, and got into fight mode. Stay! Stay there! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! 3-3, three, three, I've got a female fight! In shock or delusional, maybe both, she screamed for police officers as officers desperately tried to reason with her. Relax! Fighting for Calm down! A standoff ensued, and along with several members of the public, Sabina was eventually restrained. We are the police. Why? Roll her forwards. Over. Fuck you, guys. Fuck you. Fuck off. Help me. She got up off the floor, turned around, twatted me, I slipped. Are we going to stand her up Yeah, just cross the floor. Oh, all right, it's not a problem. We're going to try and help you, okay? Just calm down, okay? She's got incredible strength. Because we want to protect you, okay? We're not protecting you. We're to protect you, okay? Paramedics sedated both sisters before loading Sabina into an ambulance and airlifting Ursula to the hospital. So the doctors have given her something to sedate her because she's too violent to be treated at the moment. Good radials both sides? Yes. Yeah. One yeah. hand. 
The extraordinary events left authorities baffled. Adding to the mystery, during the cleanup, police found multiple burner phones and a large sum of cash among the sisters' possessions. Their older brother was later quoted saying that they were running from maniacs, but offered no details or support to back up this claim. So who were these women? Why were they fighting and running from officers who were just trying to help? How did they come to be on the highway? Was this a suicide pact? Incredibly, the strange and horrifying incident on the highway pales in comparison to what happened next. My name is Eric Crosby. Welcome to True. A former swimsuit model and naval officer create a body-positive ballet academy that ends up in a cold-blooded killing. A Brazilian supermom starts a cult-like family adopting 37 children, and then she marries one of them. Then the children team up to brutally murder the husband, who's also the stepbrother? Wondery's new weekly series, Scamfluencers, tells the unbelievable true stories behind some of the world's most infamous scams. From Wondery, co-hosts Sarah Haggy and Sachi Cool unpack what drove these scammers to deceive others and how our culture allows them to thrive. You'll hear how these charismatic and captivating people executed their schemes, conning people out of their money and sometimes their lives. Each season, Scamfluencers will immerse you in the shocking tale of fraudsters, their victims, and what happens when the facade comes crashing down. Listen to Scamfluencers on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, or you can listen early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Well, of course you would. After all, who doesn't love a great deal, right? And when it comes to great rates on insurance for all the things in your life, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners, condo, or renters coverage. You could save even more with a special discount when you bundle your coverages. Plus, the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app available 24-hour roadside assistance and more. And choosing to switch to GEICO becomes an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you can save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent and get started seeing how much you could save. The Ericsson sisters were born in Sweden in 1967 and grew up with no history of mental health issues or drug abuse. As adults, they settled away from each other, Ursula in the U.S., and Sabina with her partner and two children in Ireland. Life for the twins was relatively uneventful. All of that would change on Friday, May 16, 2008, when Ursula flew to Ireland to visit her sister. No one knows why she made the trip, or why the two suddenly and quietly left for England the next morning. Leaving her partner and kids behind, Sabina joined Ursula on the 8.30 a.m. ferry to Liverpool. Upon arrival, the twins went straight to the police station, telling officers that they were concerned for Sabina's life and the well-being of Sabina's children. This apparently was in connection to a fight she had with her partner the day before. Police contacted authorities in Dublin, who later confirmed that the children were in no danger. They asked why the women hadn't contacted authorities back in Ireland if they were that concerned. Saying nothing more, they left the police station and boarded the 11.30 a.m. bus to London. Once again, no one knows why they were headed there, and many believe the sisters weren't sure either. What authorities do know is that around 1 p.m., the women were kicked off the bus at a service station. They were three hours from London, but the bus driver had grown suspicious of their strange behavior and decided to make the unscheduled stop. The women had been sitting motionless in their seats, clinging to their bags. Fearing weapons or explosives, the driver asked to search the contents, but Ursula and Sabina refused. Taking no chances, 
they were left behind at the service station as the bus continued to its destination. Still clutching their bags tightly and acting nervous, the manager decided to call police. Officers were dispatched. After speaking with the twins, the police decided they posed no danger and left. No longer welcome at the service station, Ursula and Sabina left on foot. Security cameras show them walking behind the service station before picking them up again, walking down the middle of the M6 highway towards London. Five hours after causing one of the strangest scenes ever witnessed on UK roads, Sabina Erickson was released from the hospital. Now calm and seemingly lucid, she was handcuffed and escorted to a waiting police car. She was charged with trespassing on a highway and assault for punching the officer in the face. As she was being booked and as the TV show cameras rolled, she told an officer, quote, We say in Sweden that an accident rarely comes alone. Usually, one more follows, maybe two. There was no way to know at the time that the quaint saying was actually an ominous warning. Two days later, on Monday, May 19th, Sabina went to court and pled guilty to both charges. She was sentenced to one day in jail and released with time already served. We all want love, that happily ever after feeling of finding your soulmate. What if someone not only claimed they could help you find that perfect partner, they guaranteed it? Jeff and Shalia, a young couple famous on YouTube, teach about twin flames, a deep romantic connection with your perfect ultimate partner in their videos. It's a divine love. You're designed for no one else, and they're designed for no one else. But the path to finding your twin flame isn't so simple. Those who start to doubt the group are instructed to cut ties with friends and family that are holding them back and to corner and claim their twin flame through stalking and intimidation. By the time some members are able to leave the group, they don't even recognize themselves and the harassment to rejoin makes them fear for their safety. From Wondery, Twin Flames is a podcast about what happens when the quest for love turns into a dangerous obsession. Follow Twin Flames on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Fred Gomez Carrasco was a notorious drug cartel boss from San Antonio. After years earning millions and running from the cops, Carrasco was serving a life sentence when he decided to break out of the Walls Unit, the oldest prison in Texas. Carrasco and two henchmen took over the prison library. They held teachers and librarians captive as Carrasco bartered for his freedom. Now there's only one way that these people will see the light again, and that's for you to cooperate. The standoff set off one of the worst hostage crises in American history, the 1974 Huntsville prison siege. This will be our last day to live if, if, if somebody doesn't come through and help us. They're desperate men and they mean business. He's fixing to shoot me. You know, I'm fixing to die if you don't do something right now. And the rest of us in there are going to die, too. These people don't have anything to lose, and they're serious. And it's all on tape. Fred, the governor's on for you. The governor wants to talk to you. He can shove it. From Imperative Entertainment, this is Standoff. That are alive going out. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. As Ursula remained in the hospital in serious but stable condition with massive leg injuries, Sabina was left standing alone in a town she didn't know. She was carrying her things in a police-issued, clear plastic bag and wearing her sister's bloody shirt. She was aimlessly looking for Ursula's hospital when Glenn Holland's head came along. The 54-year-old was out walking his dog and asked if the clearly lost woman needed help. Sabina asked him if he knew of any places to stay nearby. The professional welder and Royal Air Force veteran offered the nervous but friendly woman his house. Sabina accepted, and they returned to his place, where she explained that she was desperately trying to locate her sister's hospital. Hollinshead offered to help and invited his friend Peter Malloy over for his assistance. 
Malloy would later tell police that throughout the evening, Sabina acted increasingly nervous and paranoid, constantly looking out the window. He thought she may have been running from a domestic problem, but decided not to ask any questions about it. Malloy also reported that she had offered him a cigarette, but then smacked it out of his lips, insisting it had been poisoned. A bit creeped out, but deciding she was harmless, Peter Malloy left Glenn's house around midnight. Glenn spent most of the next day making phone calls, still trying to find Ursula's hospital. With no luck so far, he invited Sabina to extend her stay until they found her. That evening, around 7.30, he stopped by a neighbor's to borrow some tea. The neighbor told police that a minute later, Holland's head came back, but this time he was bleeding. As the neighbor called for an ambulance, the dying man said, quote, She stabbed me. The medical examiner would later count five deep wounds, inflicted by a kitchen knife. Sabina Erickson ran out of Glenn's house with a hammer in hand, her escape captured on CCTV. A passing driver witnessed her striking herself in the head with the hammer and got out of his car to try and stop her. She struck him across the back of his head and continued running. The stunned man gave up the chase just as paramedics arrived. They caught up to her on a bridge and watched in horror as she jumped off onto yet another highway. The incredible 40-foot drop should have killed her, but when paramedics reached her, she was still breathing. Sabina had sustained a fractured skull and two broken ankles, but she was somehow alive. Two weeks later, on June 6, 2008, Sabina Erickson was arrested as she continued to recover in the hospital. Several months later, in September, she was well enough to be released and was immediately taken into custody and charged with murder. At the same time, Ursula was also discharged after spending five months recovering from her extensive leg injuries. She was not criminally charged in the May 17th highway incident. She flew to Sweden before returning to her home in the US. Ursula then disappeared from the public eye. A year later, in September 2009, Sabina Eriksson was in court once again. This time, however, it wasn't for trespassing or assault charges. She was there facing one count of murder for the brutal death of Glenn Hollinshead. She pleaded guilty to manslaughter, claiming diminished responsibility based on her mental state. Tonight, a Swedish woman who ran into the path of oncoming traffic on the M6 motorway and later killed a man has pleaded guilty to manslaughter. The prosecution agreed with the defense that Sabina had suffered a psychotic episode and accepted her plea the next day. However, the psychiatrists who diagnosed Sabina testified that while she had been mentally ill at the time of the murder, she wasn't ill anymore. This was a very unusual case, a unique case. The fact that the defendant was clearly mentally ill at the time of the offence and yet was not mentally ill uh, when she was sentenced, in my experience I'd never come across that. She was also considered low risk to re-offend, so the question of how to sentence her became a dilemma. The judge ultimately sentenced her to five years in prison, deciding that she really wasn't fully responsible for her actions at the time. Quote, I understand this sentence will seem entirely inadequate to the relatives of the deceased. However, I have sentenced on the basis that the reason for the killing was the mental illness, and therefore, the culpability of the defendant is low. Frustrated by the soft verdict, Glenn Hollinshead's brother made a statement. Quote, I do question the criminal justice system for allowing somebody like this to be let out when she is capable of committing such a crime. Her mental condition should have been properly assessed after what she did on the highway. Her mental disorder should have been picked up prior to her being let out into the community. Sabina Erickson was released from prison in 2011, having already served a year and a half before she was sentenced. Like her sister Ursula, she too disappeared from the public eye. The main question still unanswered is, how identical twins with no history of mental illness simultaneously suffered a psychotic episode. 
an episode so acute that within a period of 72 hours, two sisters living in different parts of the world found themselves in England, running into speeding traffic. Twice. The twins have never spoken openly about the extraordinary events, so we may never have an answer to this lingering question. From demon possession to secret government experiments, 10 years after the chaos of 2008, there is still no shortage of theories. True is a production of Imperative Entertainment. This episode of True was researched and written by me. The executive producer is Jason Hoke of Imperative Entertainment. Cover art and design was created by Jenna Sullivan. True was created and is produced by me. Comments? Questions? Get a hold of us at podcasts at imperativeentertainment.com. Fred Gomez Carrasco was a notorious drug cartel boss from San Antonio. After years earning millions and running from the cops, Carrasco was serving a life sentence when he decided to break out of the Walls Unit, the oldest prison in Texas. Carrasco and two henchmen took over the prison library. They held teachers and librarians captive as Carrasco bartered for his freedom. Now there's only one way that these people will see the light again and that's for you to cooperate. The standoff set off one of the worst hostage crises in American history, the 1974 Huntsville Prison Siege. This will be our last day to live if, if, if somebody doesn't come through and help us. They're desperate men and they mean business. He's fixing to shoot me. You know, I'm fixing to die if you don't do something right now. And the rest of us in here are going to die too. These people don't have anything to lose and they're serious. And it's all on tape. Fred, the governor's on for you. The governor wants to talk to you. He can shove it. From Imperative Entertainment, this is Standoff. Better alive going out. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.